On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including NASA's mission to a solid metal asteroid, a nuclear-powered spaceship looks to its next phase, Astroscale's debris catcher limps past its target, Boeing gets their Starliner ready for Atlas test flight, and Astra says it's good to go for the Tropics launch campaign. There's lots to go over this week, so let's get going. This is the Space Race. NASA has started its three-month-long series of tests and inspections before launch of their Psyche Asteroid Exploration spacecraft. The ship is due to launch on August 1st, bound for the metal-rich asteroid Psyche in the belt between Mars and Jupiter. What makes this particular asteroid so interesting is the high concentration of metal in its composition. NASA scientists think the asteroid could be from the earliest days of our solar system. Either it's a chunk of a planet, called a planetesimal, or it's made up of a mixture of metals formed before things really took shape in our system. Either way, it can really tell us a lot about how the fundamental elements formed here, as well as if there might be more mineral-rich bodies just floating out past Mars, waiting to be discovered. To help it do this, the Psyche probe will carry three scientific instruments into space with it. Two high-resolution color cameras for 3D imaging, a gamma ray and neutron spectrometer to study material composition, and a magnetometer to gauge the magnetic field of the asteroid. But how do we get the probe into orbit with the 226-kilometer-wide asteroid? Well, the plan is to launch the probe on top of the SpaceX Falcon Heavy booster, which should make short work of launching the Psyche probe out to Martian orbit. This is also the first time that SpaceX will fly the Falcon Heavy on a NASA mission. It should get to Mars just in time for Psyche to be passing close by, and the probe will use Mars's gravity to slingshot itself into orbit with that big metal potato. From there, the probe will shift itself into tighter and tighter orbits with its delicate electric propulsion system, taking telemetry the whole way down, going from a 700 kilometer orbit all the way down to a slim 85 kilometer one. The whole process should take about 20 months and bring back some amazingly sharp data. In addition to all that, the Psyche probe will have a pair of hitchhikers coming along for the ride. NASA's tiny 80 pound Yanis small sats are going to be fitted to the main probe and separate once they reach the asteroid belt, off on a little survey mission of their own. NASA's really getting the most out of that Falcon Heavy lift capacity here. After the three month fitting process completes, the probe's construction and inspections, the whole thing will get bundled up into a fairing and fitted to the top of that big SpaceX booster and wheeled out to the Pad 39A for its three and a half year trip into the solar system. DARPA announced on May 4th that their demonstration rocket for Agile Cislunar Operations, or DRACO, project was open to new proposals for nuclear powered spacecraft designs. Draco started last year, with Blue Origin and Lockheed Martin developing competing spacecraft designs, while General Atomics designed the nuclear reactor. This year's competition will be focused on designing the design, development, and production of a nuclear thermal rocket engine to power the test craft, with the goal of launching a flight demonstration in 2026. The idea behind the tech is that the rocket will be heated using a nuclear reactor, generating high thrust to weight ratios at anywhere from two to five times the efficiency of current chemical rockets. Chemical propulsion rockets have a diminishing return with how much thrust it takes to get around or even just to get off the surface of the earth. This is why Falcon Heavy and Starship boosters need so many engines and so much fuel. But at some point, the size of a chemical rocket versus the amount of fuel and engines it would need for liftoff just wouldn't be possible. A nuclear engine produces similar thrust to weight for much less fuel and thruster weight. It doesn't exactly solve the issue, but it should get us around our immediate space much more efficiently. This second phase of the project will have a single contract awarded, leading directly into phase three, which will involve the designing of a system to host the nuclear thermal rocket for use in an orbital test. Nuclear engines 
are a big leap forward in sustainable space travel, and it's very exciting to see Draco moving along at this pace. The Astroscale ELSA D spacecraft made a second attempt to catch a satellite in a test on May 4th, but could only manage a pass due to some thruster malfunctions the company reported. The Singapore-based company with facilities in Tokyo designed ELSA-D, which stands for End of Life Services by Astroscale Demonstration, to test a cheap solution for capturing and deorbiting space debris. The small satellite made a successful first test in August 2021, releasing its target satellite and then capturing it with the Chaser vehicle's magnet from a distance of about 30 meters. While the first attempt last year was able to successfully demonstrate ELSA D's camera, software, and capture mechanics, in January this year, a propulsion anomaly knocked out four of the service vehicle's high performance green propulsion thrusters. Astroscale says there are certain three of the four thrusters went offline due to a system issue, but is still investigating the fourth. No fuel was lost, and the test was attempted again without attempting to bring the four thrusters back online. ELSA-D is equipped with 8 HPGP thrusters in total, and since the damaged engines weren't all on the same side, the attempt was considered doable. Unfortunately, that was not the case. The satellite wasn't able to compensate enough to capture the target, coming within about 159 meters from its original 1700 kilometer starting chase position. The test wasn't without its victories though, as the craft was low enough to test its low power radio sensors, enabling Astroscale Techs to guide the craft from the ground briefly before handing control back to the satellite's software. This is a huge achievement, proving the craft can smoothly take over and relinquish control to the surface without any hiccups. Dealing with space debris is going to be a huge business in the near future, with the current debris field in orbit already causing issues with launch timings. Tech like the ELSA-D is very much needed, and these tests are really encouraging. It seems Boeing Starliner crew capsule is finally set for another try at a test launch to the ISS, as the vehicle was spotted being rolled to the United Launch Alliance's rocket hangar at Cape Canaveral on May 4th. The uncrewed test flight is scheduled for May 13th, and will hopefully be the second orbital flight test of the reusable vehicle. The Starliner has had a few bumps over the last three years of testing. In 2019, the first orbital test failed when a malfunction in the software prevented the capsule from docking with the ISS as planned. It was forced to deorbit ahead of schedule. Then, after some extensive work on the code and some updated software tests, Starliner was scheduled for a second orbital test. That was last year. While on the pad, inspection revealed 13 stuck isolation valves in the Starliner's propulsion system, and it was forced to be taken off its Atlas V rocket and repaired. After some poking around, it was discovered that corrosion due to some captured moisture reacting with the nitrogen tetroxide was to blame, and after eight months, a fix was found to counteract the moisture-rich Florida air that was somehow getting into the plumbing. The plan is to blow the pipes out with nitrogen gas before loading the fuel, which should nullify the issue entirely. Apparently, this sort of issue with these valves is a reoccurring one that frequently happens in spacecraft design. We've certainly reported on many valve issues scrubbing launches before. Kathy Luters, Associate Administrator of NASA Space Operations Mission, Dick Torrett said, This is something that is not a new phenomenon on the spacecraft side. If you've been to Florida in July, just imagine being outside. It's just the ambient humidity. This is kind of an insidious thing because you have a vehicle on the pad. So fair enough, keeping moisture out of rocket systems seems to be a problem everyone deals with at Canaveral. Now, poor Starliner's not out of the woods just yet. The final inspection and tests are due during the countdown on May 19th, so we'll have to see if the ULA has another heartbreaking scrub or a successful trip to the ISS. Let us know how you think it will go in the comments section below. Astra, a small launch service provider, announced that it is ready for the upcoming Tropics launches. The company, which both provides rockets to launch scientific instruments into orbit and develops propulsion systems for satellites and vehicles, 
was contracted in early 2021 with the plan for the first three of the six launches to take place between January and August 2022. The Tropics mission will send six CubeSats into orbit on Astra Rocket 3.3 to observe tropical storm and hurricane formation and behavior. This is tricky in that the satellites need to be placed in specific inclinations in low Earth orbit in order to actually see the storm Tropics intends to study. But the other important factor here is that this launch campaign, if successful, will demonstrate the feasibility of using small-scale, cheap, fast launches for scientific missions, something launch partners NASA and MIT are both looking forward to expanding on. The Rocket 3.3 is ideal for this sort of mission, being small, two-stage liquid oxygen kerosene rocket designed to fit into a standard shipping container. Astra boasts that they have cut out labor-intensive processes and focused on cost-efficient metallic structures for their super-cheap rocket. Astra is planning on the first three launches to be quickly sped on their way to three designated orbits, all within a 120-day launch window. And with Rocket 3.3 being so cheap to make and ship, Astra should be able to keep the launch cadence the campaign expects so they can finish the first three launches before the arrival of this year's storm season. We have yet to get an exact date for the launches, but Astra director Donald Allen warns not to trust outside sources on the timing just yet. We do know that the launches are being set up to fly from Launch Complex 46 at Cape Canaveral, so I suppose we'll just have to keep our eyes on that pad over the next three months or so. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.